Hi, my name is Brian Catho. I'm in the Department of Biostatistics at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. And this is the second lecture on Shiny, which I'm calling Shinier, uh, from the Coursera Data Science Specialization in the Data Products class. Uh, the whole series, and as well as this class, is co-taught by my good friends Jeff Leak and Roger Pang. Okay. So last time, um, we covered very basic Shiny, just how do you set up a UI, um, how do you set up the server, and how do you get a very basic um, uh, uh, interactive web page built in R. Um, and if you're like most people, if you're like most people, um, you found the building the user interface pretty trivial but had a hard time with the server.r part and interacting with it because it behaves, Shiny behaves very differently than an ordinary R session. So what we're just gonna do is cover some more of the details of Shiny. And um, there's a, since the writing of that first lecture, um, a more detailed tutorial has come out and um, it's really great. So I would just go check that out as well. Okay. So, um, let's just first start talking about what server.r is doing. So, um, if you, if you um, put some code before the shiny server function in the server.r file, that just gets called once when you do run app. Um, code inside the um, unnamed, this unnamed function right here um, in the shiny server statement, um, that gets executed um, every time there's a page refresh or a new user hits the, hits the website, okay? So this stuff, the stuff that's executed before the shiny server function gets executed once, once run app is called, um, and the rest gets executed every single time. Uh, there's a page refresh or a new user. And then reactive code are codes that are inside the um, um, render statements. For example, render plot or render text statements in the shiny server, um, shiny server statement. And those get run repeatedly as needed um, when new values are entered into the um, widgets from UI.R. Um, okay, so let's just go through some experimental code. I'll look at the code here and then I'll call up this app in, in just a second. All of this code is on the GitHub repository. Um, so we're going to do a page with sidebar. This is the UI. Um, I just put hello shiny there because that was in the tutorial and I don't know why I keep doing it. So I'm just going to have two things, text input one and text input two. So I'm going to have two text input boxes and then here I'm going to output a bunch of text and you'll see what my goal is in the outputting the text. Um, Notice um, the input text labels, the input la text labels are text one and text two and it looks um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that, that's the, the input IDs are text one and text two. The labels is the, this is just the um, text that it's going to put in the, in the um, text box um, that you type into. And the output is maybe confusingly labeled um, text one, text two, text three, text four, and text five. Okay. Let's look at what server is doing. Okay. So here's um, what I'm doing. I'm using the double arrow sign just to make sure that everything is assigned outside of all environments and globally assigned. Probably that's not necessary for these things that are outside of the Shiny server function, but maybe might be necessary inside here. But um, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable um, um, uh, x and I'm going to increment it plus one. So I'm going to define x in R before I run run app. Um, and then I'm going to set this variable y to be zero and then inside the shiny server function I'm going to increment it once. So here in output text 4 I'm going to render y. In output text 5 I'm going to render x. In output text 1 I'm just going to render what got input in the text 1 input box. 
in output text two, I'm going to render what got input in the text two input box. In um, output text three, I'm going to take text one and I'm going to add one. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, so here I have my um, here I have my server.r code, and um, let me just type run app. Uh, there's a thing called display mode, but let me let me just run it normally right now. Okay, and here it is. Okay, so you can see it says hello shiny. Okay, and in output text one, we haven't input anything, so that value is still null, so when it prints it out, it's printing out nothing. Output text two, we haven't input anything, so that's still null. Output text three, it's trying to add one to a value of null, so that get returns an NA, okay? And I've set X um, to zero, and then added one to it, and so now it's one, and Y, which was set to zero inside the function and is now set as one. Let's see what happens when we refresh. Okay, oops, uh, sorry, this was y. So now notice y is incremented to two, but x is still incremented to one. Okay, and actually if I wanted to do this, let me do this correctly. Um, I'm gonna stop that. Um, I'm gonna stop running the app. I wanna set x to zero in the environment here. There we go. Okay, so here you can see now x is one because it's incremented at once um, at the start of the run app statement. Okay, and 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 y um, here's x right here and here's y right here. Okay, let's refresh. See um, now y is two because it's executing this statement every single time there's a page refresh or a new user. Okay, now let's input some text. Let's input um, x, uh, the first text one, let's input is two. Now notice it's two, and then here it's at three because this text, um, um, this text is uh, x, uh, the text one input plus one. Okay, now let's try inputting five for this guy. Okay, now it's five. Now notice what happens if I change text two to six, right? Notice it updated this, it updated this, but it, it didn't do anything to that. I, it waits until I update it, and then it will. It does so. Shiny only um, executes what's needed, only the component of the code that's needed, um, and so. It, the, the biggest mistake you can make in a Shiny app is to think of the Shiny function as something where the code just runs through it serially. Um, these reactive text statements, these reactive um, code statements um, are reacting to the widget input and in, in, a, in, a, in a manner that doesn't necessarily rerun this text, right? It doesn't necessarily rerun this one when, it, when, when you input a new value for this one, okay? Okay, so that was our first example. Let's move on to another example. Um, well, let, actually, now that I look at the notes, let me let's just dis dis discuss it. Okay, so when you type run app, uh, hitting refresh increments y, but um, entering values in the text box does not increment y. You have to do a page refresh, or a new user would have to connect. Um, X is always one because that only gets executed once at the start of server.r. And then watch how text one and up, 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 text two are updated as needed, um, and it doesn't add one to text one every time a new text two is input. Um, important uh, uh, to do this, I think. Try run app and then display dot mode equals showcase. Um, that's very useful for seeing what Shiny is actually executing um, at the time that it's executing it. Okay. Um, so sometimes, so reactive expressions, so the render, the render statement, um, uh, yeah, I'll delete that one is unnecessary there. The, the render statement is a, these render plot, render text, et cetera, those are reactive statements. They react to widget input um, and so on. Sometimes in your code, you, you want 
to have reactive code, but you don't actually want it to be part of a render statement for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, for example, you might want some code that gets reused in several render statements, and you don't want to recalculate, do what re redo the calculations for each, or you want your code to be neater. There's a variety of reasons why you want this. So there's a function called reactive that's just made for this purpose. Okay. So let, I think it's easy to explain this in, in just an example. So here's the second example. Um, so here I, I have the same, you know, basically the same UI.R function. Um, but imagine now I want to take my text input and add a hundred to it. But I only want to do that once. I want to, uh, you know, I want to add a hundred to it and I want to display it twice, right? So here in this first output, I'm going to display my input incremented by a hundred. And then in the second one, I'm going to display my input incremented by 100 plus whatever number I put into text two. Okay, so it you know obviously this doesn't change the runtime that much, but now we only have to increment it by 100 once rather than doing it twice once in each reactive um, render text statement. Okay, so at any rate, you, you might you know you might have thought, oh well, if I just put input asterisk text one plus 100. Um, outside of this reactive statement, what would happen? Shiny would give you an error because you're trying to um, utilize reactive input um, outside of a reactive function or a render text function or something like that that, that uh, is reactive, okay? So um, it's, it's a little bit unusual and if you're not used to it it's, and you're used to R, it's a little hard to get used to. Okay, so and this just is, is as opposed to, you know, what would give you the same exact functionality is to just add 100 in both re render text statements. Um, but of course, then you're doing this calculation twice. And of course, this calculation doesn't take any time, so it's irrelevant, but you see the principle. Um, so and then we're going to do, we're going to do run app and display node you know, equals showcase. Um, and, um, you know, and again, while inconsequential that we only have to add 100 one time rather than adding it twice. Um, and then, you know, it just would also say, notice the somewhat odd syntax for reactive variables. So um, notice here, when we actually want the values of X, which was defined as reactive output, we actually have to call it as, a, as an executed function with these parentheses which is a little bit unusual relative to normal R programming, okay? Um, okay, so here is my example. Um, I'm, uh, I've already started running the app. Here's my Shiny server function right here, okay? And notice this case, I've put the X function, the added the 100 in the reactive statement, and it's running. And notice I've run display mode equals showcase, okay, so right here. Okay, and then now, um, notice, I, so, so here you can see what code it's running. So if I, if I put in x equals 100, right now it has output text 1 equals 200, output text 2 is na because we haven't input anything. Now when I put in 100 there, it highlights, notice in the display mode it highlights what it's, what it's doing. You can check on ui.r also and see where it's, where it's, what it's running, okay? Um, and so you see, it, you know, it, and just to, to prove to you that it does the same thing, let's, um, what's the keyboard shortcut for commenting? Let's see, comment, comment, uncomment. It's control shift C. All right, so let's do control shift C and then come down here, control shift C, okay. Save it, stop, now let's run the app and we'll just show you that it does exactly the same thing. When, let's see, it gives the same exact output, it works just like before, but now instead it's, it's adding 100 separately each time in, in the separate render.txt render statement. In some cases, you may want your reactive code to not be so reactive, uh, which I know sounds ludicrous, but let me explain. Um, basically, sometimes you don't want Shiny to immediately perform reactive calculations from widget inputs. So notice in all my previous examples, when I input inputted text, 
um, it immediately did the calculations as soon as it got the chance to. However, you know, often your calculations are expansive and you simply don't want the reactivity to occur immediately. You want the user to input them, think about them and make sure they got it set right and then push go or something like that. So in other words, you, you, you want something like a submit button, um, something. And, and it's very simple to do this. Um, and uh, let's see, so here I'm still doing a page with a sidebar. Hello Shiny is my header I keep putting in it. So here I have text one is my input for text one. Text two is my text two input. And then I'm gonna put an action button called go button. So the label is go button and the, the uh, I'm sorry, the input ID is go button and the label above the button will be go um, exclamation point. And then the main panel, you'll see it, it's just outputting text one, text two, text three. Okay. And then my server.r, um, in my server.r function, um, here I'm just going to output text one, I'm going to output text two, and then in the text three, I'm going to um, dependent make the execution of that reactive code dependent on the go button, okay? And so I'm going to, you know, sort of create this dependency on the go button right here, and then this isolate statement will isolate doing that statement until the button is pressed. Okay? So let's try it. Okay. Now I'm going to hit A and B just like before. Notice when I change A to C, it changes there. When I change B to D, it changes there. And when I hit go, it displays both of them. C and D, right? I could change this to E, F, you know, I could write in data products here, right? Oops, I want it up here. I want data products up there, and then is cool, R cool, <laughs> R cool. Okay, and it doesn't notice it says, you know, data products there, and is R cool there, but it won't concatenate it into the sentence until you press the button go. Okay. And let, let's see, so I have another example here, um, or let's, uh, I try to uh, just discuss uh, what we saw. Um, it doesn't display text three until the go button is pressed. Um, the variable input go button, it gets incremented every single time you press the button. So you can actually use that um, to create conditional statements, sort of like if go button equals one, then you could say you've pressed the button once. So here's the, I replaced the code in that other example where I said if go button equals zero, then you've pressed the button. As if go button equals one, you've pressed it once, and then else, okay, quit pressing it. Okay. Okay, so you can see the code over here. And then now let's um, look over here and input some text. Okay, so I'm going to put just A B, and B there, and it, notice it reactively displays the text. It says, you have not pressed the button. I pressed the button once. You pressed it once. Okay, quit pressing it. Okay, so that's how you can build condition on the number of button presses um, statements into your reactive code. Okay, so um, let's just talk a little bit more about layouts. Um, the sidebar layout that we've been showing is for sure the easiest. Um, and then there's a more general layout of which the sidebar layout is created via it's called it's a, a fluid page. It's it's a much more flexible style to use and is uh, it's basically just accessing the, the Twitter bootstrap styles. And you can go to this link right here and see a bunch of examples and just tinker with the examples. Um, so, for example, in your fluid page statement, you can have fluid row statements can create rows, and then the column function creates columns, and you can just see in there how you can use um, R to, to create the layout. And, and you can have things like tab sets, nav list, and nav bars for more complicated apps, um, and they're relatively easy to create. Um, if you want to directly use the HTML, um, 
you know, for a really complicated layout, you want to do that. Um, plus, you know, to be honest, if you know web development well, which I really don't, but if you really know web development well, um, then working with um, R to develop the layout is probably kind of annoying um, to you. So, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with R and don't know um, web development very, very well, then, then this is probably perfect. But if you happen to know web development quite well, then probably this is excruciating. Um, so just create a directory called www in the same directory with server.r. So the directory www exists in the same directory as server.r. Um, server.r does not exist inside the www, www directory. Okay, and then have an index.html page in that www directory. Okay, so the page layout is in this directory. The server exists at the same root directory that this www directory exists in. Okay, hopefully I've beat that to death. Okay, and then um, you, 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 uh, your named input variables will be passed to server.r. So if you have an input of some type, um, this is just a numeric text box number, um, and um, um, name here is equals n, so uh, input dollar sign n can be used in your server.r state, reactive statements. Um, and your server.r will have class def definitions of the form uh, shiny something. Um, so um, when you want to display reactive output in your HTML, um, you need, for example, um, to call you know to say the the class the cl class statement. Um, and that's it. Um, then you can the examples are are up here at this link. And you could do it uh, more thoroughly there, but I just want to make sure you know it's 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 really very easy. If you know a little bit of web development, it's it's trivial. If you know if you can get a shiny app running, and you know web development, then this being able to do this should be no problem. Um, so some debugging tools. Um, let's talk about debugging tools. De debugging shiny apps is kind of annoying um, be because it's sort of not a core part of R. It's sort of built on top of R, so it's a little. Um, so I actually find this display mode equals showcase incredibly useful. Um, and you can use the cat, which is just like the C function um, cat, uh, the, the C programming language function cat, or um, um, anyway, it just displays um, text at standard out. Um, so the R console in this case, usually, if you're running um, run app from the R console. Um, and then the browser function can in, will interrupt execution, and so you can call the browser function conditionally. And anyway, Shiny has a whole article on debugging Shiny apps, and you know these are the easily the only three ones that I would ever use. Um, mostly, I, I use the cat function to display the status of code in um, inside the app. That's what I find more useful than anything else. Um, and that's it. So hopefully you're, you're up and running now with creating um, Shiny applications. And, and I'm confident what you'll find is that you can go from our code to a web product very, very quickly, which is what we want people to be able to do. And we're excited, to, um, we're excited for people to start putting out their own web apps and see what they create.